Hey there, ladies and jelly spoons. Joe here again. So they say that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. This time, I'm going to try a watering system using the right materials. Let's see what we can get into. Okay, so I've tried using just a water hose. I've used the bottles. Don't like those. Tried a five-gallon bucket, a 55-gallon drum, and now, the fifth time, I'm going to try a 35-gallon leg tank. It's got little legs here. We'll keep it flat. I can mount it to the roof of the uh, bunny bungalow. You don't have to worry about it rolling off or anything. I can strap it down with some nylon straps and some metal tap screws. Should hold it nice and firmly. I can fill it from the top or I can fill it from this little uh, drain hole here. And as long as I keep there a little bit of water in this tank, as it drains, it'll always have water. So that's what we're gonna try with this project. Hopefully it works. This has been one of the most difficult projects I've tried to figure out because there's just nothing out there that says, hey, this is a project that you can put together. It's already pre-assembled or pre-put together. Uh, it's already got all the parts that are necessary. You just put it together yourself. There's nothing like that for rabbits. Chickens have the little feeder water bowl things. You know, goats, they have, you know, all kinds of stuff for cows. Nothing for rabbits. So I'm going to make something. And if I get this to work, I'm going to patent it. Okay, so the only thing I don't really like about it so far, just starting out, is that it's clear. We've got to fix that. If we use a clear container for water, it's going to allow algae to grow in the container. It can possibly contaminate the rabbits, make them sick. I don't know. Don't want to take the risk. I like my rabbits. want to keep them good and healthy. So I'm going to tape off this threaded top. And I'm also going to cover this entry hole here. That way we don't have any paint or primer going into this water bottle or into this storage bottle. And then uh, I'm going to let that dry while I start getting plumbing fixtures together. So I'm just going to use this can of Rust-Oleum primer. Uh, I don't think it's very imperative that you use a specific type. This is just what I have, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. Alright ladies and jelly spoons, so I got the tank painted, uh, just put a coat of primer on it, I figured that would be a better idea than go ahead and painting it black, maybe it won't get the, let the water get so hot. Um, also, I've gone ahead and put the one inch threaded nail adapter into this uh, porthole right here, the drain hole, uh, and then I also put a bushing from a one inch to a three quarter inch so that it can receive three quarter inch PVC. So now that we've got that reduced, I'm gonna go ahead and mount this on the roof of the bunny bungalow and go ahead and get it situated so I can plumb the rest of it in and we can get these water lines run. Be right back. All right, as you can see, I've got the tank 
supported on the roof of the shed that I keep the rabbits in. Uh, it's going to be fed right here with this water line that I have. I'm just going to hook a water hose up to it right there and that will fill it. As you can see, it's going to fill the one line, come around, or it'll fill the tank, and then when the water pressure equalizes, the water will come down here and then feed into the shed. Then when the water line comes in, it's going to feed several nipples that I have throughout here. Uh, we're gonna have those feeder lines are going to come down here. Uh, one going to the male, one or possibly two feeding this cage which houses the single breeding female and the kits as they start to grow out. And then I'm going to have the lines going to come all the way over here and feed possibly two nipples that are going to uh, supply these grow outs. These are the older grow outs. And then over here, I'm going to build another housing unit like I did for this guy right here. Um, and I think I'm going to have a second breeding female in there. And then as necessary, I will trade them out uh, into the, the grow out pen or the grow out cages here and here. That way I can simultaneously have two females uh, in succession and a litter of grow outs in succession and hopefully have pretty optimal productivity from the rabbits. I'm going to be running some supports that I'm going to mount to that top rail uh, that runs all the way along the back of the bunny bungalow area here and go ahead and start getting this plumbing secure. Okay, as you can see here, I've got the PVC stubbed in from the reservoir tank. I'm using some three quarter T's. They're three quarters on the outside, half inch threaded on the middle section. And I've put the quarter inch uh, barb to half inch threaded into that with some thread tape it's going to create a nice watertight seal and i'm going to go ahead and glue that up to that nipple there all right now that i've let that cure for a few seconds that glue, glue should be good and bonded by now. I'm going to go ahead and add the next section. So this first one is going to feed this uh, Bucks cage here. I'm going to put in this second one that's right beside it. And it's going to feed this cage right here, which houses the doe and the, uh, the youngest litter. Start with some more primer. Okay, so that's two feeder nipples installed. This next section is going to be quite a long run, actually. It's going to go all the way down to the other end of the cage down in this area. So I've got a long section of pipe that I'm going to be running to that. But I've also put some strapping here that I'm going to use to help support this PVC. It can handle the pressure, but it can't handle flexing. So this support isn't perfectly adjusted. I just put it up here to put it through. And once I get the piping run to this area, I'll pull that out and adjust it up to the level that I need it to. So we have a gradual decline. So we have plenty of water pressure behind it because again, this system is purely gravity driven. Okay, so to connect these water lines is actually really simple. Uh, you go ahead and place the feeder nipple and the spring 
on one end of the hose. And then you put the other end on the barb. Right there on the barb. Make sure you get it all the way up to the top. And I'm going to take these and set them off to the side for right now because I'm going to have to connect them from the underside of the cage at a later point. But now those two lines are ready and run. We've got a piece of PVC sticking over here at this end. I'm going to go ahead and move my ladder so I can make some adjustments. And then I will uh, go ahead and connect the rest of this line. Okay, so just for grins and giggles, I, uh, I happened to cross one of those shark bite um, attachments that's supposed to work for this hose. It's got a 3 8 outer diameter. I'm going to clip it on here and see if it holds. Huh. Looks like it might. see got my water lines run all the way down here now just about to the end of the cage that will give me plenty of room to have water feeders for all these little guys right here and for the cage that's over here and for my buck that's down there so Let's finish hooking up these water hoses and the nipples, and we'll, we'll test it, see how it works out. Okay, here is my final synopsis. We got the tank mounted up there. The hose runs down through there and up to this spigot right here. Uh, admittedly, this is not ideal. This hose is way too long for this. Uh, however, that's what I have right now, so that's what I used. Um, it does work. It works really well. We just pressure tested it to see uh, if there were any leaks in any of the plumbing. There's none. Um, the way I know that it is full is that it leaks out of the lid. And that's because that lid is made to do that. Uh, that way it doesn't have, hold any pressure for uh, when it's being used as a, a spray tank or as a reservoir tank. So that worked out well. Come over here. Oh, sorry, buddy. Come over here. You can see where the lines go all the way across where I mounted them. It's got a slight downward angle to it so that it, the gravity uh, does all the work for us. Uh, in the major grow out uh, area here, I have three water lines. So as we go into summer, we have pretty... Uh, Pretty warm summers here in the southeast, so I want to make sure that they have plenty of water. As you can see here, Mama Rabbit is hanging out. She has already discovered the water line in the back there. Uh, so that's great news. We've got these little guys here. They're about three weeks old today. And they've just started crawling around and hopping around. Their eyes are open. So... That's pretty awesome. And then uh, Big Buck over here, his water line is back there in the corner. Uh, he has yet to discover it, but he doesn't really consume as much water as uh, the mom does. And obviously she's, she's still nursing, so that makes perfect sense. Anyway, I'm pretty happy about that. Like I said before, no leaks in any of the piping. Uh, that shark bite. Uh, adapter that actually ended up working a little bit better than I thought it did uh, originally when I put the pipe in there or the tubing and it hasn't leaked at all so I'm pretty excited about that okay so as you can see this is taking me a couple of days different outfit and this outfit is just sweated through 
it's already really hot here and it's just the middle of April. So this is going to be a project that's going to save us a lot of time and it's going to make sure that the rabbits stay good and healthy uh, through these summer months. We want to make sure that we have good breeding stock for the fall. So make sure that everybody does well. Um, just in reflection of my own experience through this, uh, I've gone through this three, four times now. Uh, I've tried to do it the cheapest possible way. I've tried to do it the easy way. I've tried to do it any way I could think of. And in the end, it just made more sense to do the right way. Use a proper water storage tank. Um, I will post a picture here of where I got the tank and how much it cost me. Uh, I'm not you know, promoting that by any means, but that's the only place I could find it in my area that suited my needs. So that's it. Um, I would suggest go ahead and get you a proper water tank so you have good storage. It's got good uh, connections. It's going to allow it to remain watertight um, and do what I did, cover it in some kind of coating. Primer worked for me. You can use any kind of spray paint, something like that, just to make sure that, that you kind of cut down on the algae growth because that is going to be a problem. We're talking about long-term storage for water. So that's going to be something that we'll have to deal with. Uh, your situation may vary from mine, but in my yard, I get quite a bit of sunshine. Uh, where I have the, the rabbits are under a very large oak tree, and it does stay shaded during the harder parts of the day. Uh, so just kind of do what you need to do to suit your needs and think about it analytically. Um, I, I'm really, really happy with the way this turned out. I think this is going to help us tremendously. So I'm really excited to, to go ahead and let that take a little bit of a burden off of us in the caring process for these rabbits. And I hope that this helps somebody out there. Um, if you have any questions for me, please leave them in the comments section below. I will try to uh, answer them as quickly as possible. If you want to know what materials I use, please ask me that. I'd be happy to supply you with a materials list. Until next time, y'all take care. We'll catch you later. See ya.